listening to Educating from the Heart. Thank you for joining our lively conversations with teachers, support professionals, parents, and students as they share issues that matter most in our public schools. Here are your hosts, Tina Dunbar and Luke Flint. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Tina Dunbar with my co-host, Luke. Hi, Luke. Introduce our guests and why they're here. Sure, Tina. We have a great group of people lined up for our listeners. From St. John's County, we have Michelle Dillon, president of the St. John's County Education Association. Alongside her is Justin Vogel, a high school advanced placement teacher. Over in the panhandle, Dave Galloway, the president of the Jackson County Education Association, will be joining us. And from the center of the state, Stuart Platt and Kathy Smith, who are the president and vice president, respectively, of the Lake County Education Association. And all of them are here to talk about House Bill 641, which is the teacher salary allocation that you'll hear us refer to as the TSA. The TSA was $500 million for teacher raises, which sounds really good, but it came with a lot of strings. The most onerous of those strings is that 80% of the funds had to be spent on new educators. That has left veteran teachers feeling rightfully unappreciated and unvalued. Yes, it's an interesting and topical conversation on a subject some listeners may have recently noticed in their local news. But first, Luke, I think we need to acknowledge our program change. You know, we plan to provide a 2020 review, but while preparing for the show, we stumbled upon this timely discussion about teacher raises. So for this episode, we're going to share a conversation on how the state's plan to increase teacher pay is working out for teachers and school districts. And while you're listening, our guests are going to get into the weeds. So you might hear some unfamiliar terms like the DSA or base student allocation. You'll hear about salary schedules and steps and compression of the salary schedule. Wow, that sounds like a lot. Please hang in, because this really is a good show. You just got to get through the first couple of minutes. But now, this is also a perfect opportunity for me to promote our show notes page. Listeners will find additional information and resources from each episode. And for this episode, called Payable Divisions, listeners will find a list of definitions and terms used during the show. Now, don't forget to check our Educating from the Heart show notes page at fdaweb.org slash podcast. Okay, Luke, I think we're ready to get started. We're here really to talk about the the teacher salary allocation. Um, Governor DeSantis went all around the state promising a uh, $47,500 starting salary. Um, But of course, that is not actually what happened. Uh, So... Uh, Michelle, maybe we'll start with you and then just go around. Um, If you could tell us what did happen in your district. Okay, thanks, Luke. In St. John County, we negotiated to raise the base to 45535 so we didn't quite get to the Um, $47,500. If your raise didn't quite reach 2%, then we'll equalize it to make it 2%. Uh, $800 $800 raise and those above $45,500 i have got the $1,000 raise and a $600 one-time Thank you. Dave, uh, over in Jackson County, what's it look like? You know, when the when the good news landed about, about the money coming, um, we did uh, quite a bit of research and, and spent a lot of time talking, talking with members, getting information out to members that, A, nobody's getting forty five seven. And and uh, and B, go into great details to explain the TSA and and the deep impact that would have on our on our veteran teachers. That you know, uh, most of the money would be new teachers. First year teacher end up with a seventeen percent raise with our new base salary of forty thousand seven hundred fifty one dollars. And that that raise decreased as you got up to year nine, which was the step that was already at $40,000. Um, so educating 
location was a big part of this. Um, we ended up with, like I said, the new base of $40,751. Um, and with uh, everybody above that getting um, a $1,500 raise in recurring funds, meaning that there would be uh, $865 added to the base step to, to each step on our plan and then move teachers would move up a step into the next step for them and there's a $650 differentiation between steps and that worked out to like I said $1,500 um, if you're topped out uh, at 20 we have 25 25 plus we had to create a step last year to get rid of some compression issues the the teachers that are topped out will will see the $835 increase to to their step and get a $650 one-time non-recurring bonus all right thank you and uh Stuart over in Lake all right in Lake um because of our our salaries and and being lower than the norm in this region I am a school board that is classic whatever the legislature says we have to deliver so it was a little uphill battle of trying to, to negotiate anything outside of the the strict parameters of the legislation but we were able to get our base rate up to 44,750 um, the sad part is they wouldn't let us stagger anything so what that meant was a compression of new teachers through teachers with about a 12 or 13 year experience, all making the same money. And due to some of the actions, both at the negotiating table and through our members, we were able to guarantee the people above the 44,750 a 2% uh, increase because originally the school board didn't want to really put any school board money into this plan. So, I mean, what it sounds like is that everybody is getting some money, but that there are going to be terrible inequities. Well, how, how, how do the, the folk in the classroom feel about that? Oh, in, in a word, my veteran teachers um, are pissed because they're looking at a complete disregard by uh, the legislature to their their time actually in the classroom. I've had more than one veteran teacher tell me that the, 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 the big money new teachers are gonna have to figure this stuff out by themselves. You know, and, and that's more reaction to the, the slap from Tallahassee. At the end of the day, we're gonna do what we do and help who needs to be helped to be an effective teacher in our classroom. But, you know, um, and it, it just, it's just a rift. I mean, but everything Tallahassee does is done with purpose and intent. And, and here we are. You want to see the worst in people, put a giant bag of money on the table and try and figure it out. You know, and, uh, and, and that's, again, what's happened here. And this is why it was really imperative that, that the district kind of stepped up. Um, our, our initial offer from the district was a $792 increase with 574 left from the, uh, the, the, uh, the 20 percent of the TSA money and they were willing to add $217 to the pot. And, and we were told that that was an absolute non-starter. This is where the member engagement piece came in. And, and we were able to make the argument that the damage that would do to the morale of the veteran teachers, you know, uh, really got us to the settlement that we're voting on on Thursday. Yes, I was thinking about morale. Teachers already shoulder so much with the pandemic. I don't think anybody thinks about how all this stuff impacts them, their work, and even students. For, for, here's an email I got from a veteran teacher. Why are veteran teachers at 25 years plus only at $10,000 more than newcomers? In caps, this is not fair at all. I am so fed up with this and glad that I only have a small way to go. I do not agree at all. Well, and we know in, in our district, 
the push is for collaboration between our experience and new teachers within grade levels and within subject matter. And we know that it's our experienced teachers who are carrying the brunt of the collaboration, the lesson planning, guiding new teachers uh, to get them to increase their instructional practice. And this plan where if you've got 13 years experience and you're making the exact same money as someone walking in off the street is very disheartening. It's very aggravating. And like Dave, we have some who are reactionary saying, I'm not helping anymore. Have you lost members as a result of this? What happened? Um, I can tell you we've had at least 10 cancellations so far. Um, just some people don't realize that the big picture. I've been yelled at. It's my fault. I don't want to be part of the union. I can't negotiate more. Um, they're just angry. Just straight up angry. It's hard for people to um, to decipher what part of this is the is Tallahassee's blame and what part of it is the, the local district school board. You know, um, it's hard for people that aren't doing this every day to follow. Um, but if you look at and Michelle mentioned the big picture in the state of Florida, the, the, the newly elected governor is looking at you know kind of a tumbling position in the average teacher salary. We got to forty seventh, and you know if you're the governor of a state. And, and you're in 47th place, um, you know, that's, they don't like that. And so one way to, to increase the average uh, teacher salary is to do it from, from the bottom. So it's not that inequity was inevitable. While that is true, inequity was inevitable with House Bill 641. Inequity was the point. Inequity was with purpose. They, they passed this law with intention. Um, uh, your veteran teachers have higher salaries. Uh, they're not getting increases. They are, uh, your veteran teachers are union members. Uh, newer teachers often are not. Uh, you know, they can't afford it at $38,000 a year, $39,000 a year. Maybe maybe now they'll, they'll join. But my point is, this was intentionally uh, passed in order to divide, um, you know, in, into, into camps, veterans versus new teachers and so on and so forth. Yeah, and we know what the legislature's stated reason was, right? Not not their actual reason, right? But their stated reason is that this would help with recruitment. Um, and I'm wondering, I, I can see already uh, the, the expressions on your faces. Um, people are not beating down the doors of the district office to start being teachers now? Well, I mean, I think we're going to see an uptick, especially in Jackson County, because forty thousand dollars is real money up here. I mean that that's a, that's considered a, a chunk. So what's going to happen is you're going to have teachers, you know, coming in, but the what I call the churn and burn rate, right? It's not going to be five years now. It's going to be two to three years where people are going to be like, you know, forty k is not enough. I'm out. And then we get a new teacher, a new teacher, a new teachers. And it's going to further destabilize uh, our profession because you're going to have one, one and done, two and done, maybe three. And how does it impact students? Oh, there you go. If, if you do not have, I, I often call teachers the cadre of education, right? These are the guys that, I mean, th these are people that have forgotten more about teaching than I'll ever know because of their time in the classroom. And, and that, that, that time that they've had to hone this crap, that is not honored or even thought of by Tallahassee. And it's gonna be further degradation of, of the whole of the whole crap. It shouldn't come to the surprise that a, a commissioner of education who has called teacher unions evil would push for legislation that um, that has a severely negative impact on union membership. Um, you know, what we're talking about right now with, with I have 1,400 out of the 2,650, 1,400 that are in that veteran group, you know, that that's half. And they're using David's word, they're pissed. That's intentional. <laughs> Richard Corcoran wanted this to happen. So, Kathy, tell us about your member engagement efforts in Lake County. Well, we tried to get um, our members, and many of them did. They started writing emails to the school board. And many of them were on Facebook. Um, 
couple teachers actually started a collaborative group that they were supposed to help each other and so forth. And it did help. But at the time when they were talking about that, then things started to, to ramp up. Um, but I think some of the school board members did finally realize that there is a big difference between what is happening. Um, to be honest with you, we also had a new board member come on board also. Uh, we think that kind of changed a little bit, possibly. Um, but many of the teachers were not understanding why we had professional managerial people and no offense to staff, because <laughs> they deserve it because they don't get enough money either. But both were getting a 2% raise all across, but yet we did not. Many of the teachers didn't, yeah. And so ours was kind of staggered. It was those that did not get up to the 44750 was 1%, one and a half, and then 2%. Because the board was only willing, it was about $80,000. And that's all they were willing to do to go put up with the other money, the state money. And after conversations, after emails, Facebook, different things, they came back and said they would at least go up to the 2% for everybody. Which supposedly it, supposedly it affected 917 teachers is what they had presented at the bargaining last week. And that's what they, they said it helped those people. But of course, it's not going to be very much because some of them, you know, even a 1%, you know, so it's only a half a percent or a 1% to make them up to the 2%. So it's not that much that they're going to get, but it does make it even now with what everybody else had received. Does it close the gap? No, but it, it's a step in the right direction. We're, we, yeah, right direction, at least, um, to go along with what some of the other ones have said. It's like they're not wanting, and Stuart even alluded to this, they are not wanting to give up anything for experienced teachers, which we don't really understand. We asked for, um, there's a lot of talk about the longevity supplements, you know, something to give to, to our veteran teachers so that they don't have the 13, 14 years experience in getting the same amount as everybody else. But so far that hasn't gone over either. So, and it is very, very poor <laughs> of the legislators to come up and make all these inequities of somebody that's teaching for 12, 13, 14 years, but yet they're making the same amount as somebody coming in. Many of them coming in, they're not coming in from the education field. I don't know about you, Dave, but they're not. I mean, they're, they're just, they're getting, as Dave said, you have the money, $3,000 to someone. Well, here it's forty four seven fifty. That's a lot of money in Lake County. Um, and I mean, they're coming in, but we see a lot of them leaving. I mean, I have, um, I, I. And they don't have the same experience either. They don't have the same experience. No, and many of them, you know, Dave was saying they say two or three years. I don't know about you, but. We've had many that don't stay that long. We're up to all right at 25 teachers that have started the year and they're already gone. Well, it's clear the state has created a divisive pay plan that pits experienced teachers against their less experienced peers. And it backs the district up against the wall by creating another huge financial burden. How should we hold state leaders accountable? I, I think it's been clear over the last few sessions that while the frontal assault on education continues, there's there's also these the probing or skirmishes, if you will, with the school board. They're they're talking about uh, school board setting term limits for school board members. They're talking, you know, the the, the big funding shell game every year. Um, when our our county, eighty five percent of our school board funding comes from state dollars. We don't have beach money. We don't have a lot of tourist money. We're, we're completely, I would say, 100% dependent upon uh, what flows down from Tallahassee. So our board members are very intimidated um, by, by the way, you know, the whole funding piece is set up here. And um, it, it's just really hard to get that. They will not engage the Department of Education. It will not engage Tallahassee because Lord knows we don't want to make a man. 
they raise the BSA, but they, they you know, the, the increase to FRS alone eats up the increase to the BSA this year. That's it. Right. And, and when I when I try to explain to members that even though the, uh, the BSA went up, all that money's already been accounted for, you know, um, and, and it's always a hard sell. But and I, I hear it all the time. What's the union doing about this? The issue is not with the local union. It's with the people that you elect to Tallahassee every year. We're not a firewall. We're, we're, not, we're not the last chance brigade here. It starts in the ballot box. And when, when, when uh, public education, I'm not even going to say advocates, public education supporters get elected to public office, this is going to lessen the burden on, on uh, local action here at the district. But until that happens, you know, it, it's, it's one action after another. And, and I think I, I, this whole thing is kind of opening the door to the state legislature setting teacher and school salary schedules the way they do in 17 other states that pay teachers less than Florida, that the state sets the salary schedule. And I'm afraid that this whole dichotomy that's been created is kind of opening the door for that discussion that we need to be to watch out for because that would devastate collective bargaining that's a very good point so as we move into the legislative session what will we ask our legislators to do what's the ask i think it's got to be to continue the path if you wait whatever it was 47 47,500 then you need to continue with the money and continue with the funding and, and make sure and realize that the experienced teacher is really the backbone of our public education system. So is the desire then that, uh, that, that the legislature mandate certain amount of whatever funds they dictate this coming year, go to veteran teachers to sort of help, um, uh, do away with the inequity that they created um or should the folk up in tallahassee just finally practice what they preach and restore local control it, it, local control is the answer i mean it always comes down to local control because my district is different than michelle's district is different than, than stewart's district they're just i mean the framework's there but but the 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 day-to-day -day is just vastly different than what we have to deal with and it's local, the local elected officials need to be the one, they need to be the shot callers with that, not, you know, some, some guy over in Tallahassee. If we're going to increase BSA, increase local control, increase uh, equitable funding for schools, that's going to have to come from a multi-prong approach dealing with school board, legislature, and in the administration at the state level. I agree with Dave with the asks for local control and adequate equitable funding. I think we need to look more to our members to get them involved. And got some members on my radar who are so pissed off about this bill that they want to uh, get involved, even if it's virtually. We've got the delegation meeting coming up. Yes, Michelle, but St. John's is a wealthy county with a solid property base, yet even with the district adding more money, it did not make it to the 47.5 finish line. That should send a strong message to parents and the community about school funding. There's some level of complacency with our parents and our community members because they're just so thrilled to be in the number one county. They bury their head in the sand and everything is just fabulous here. So they, they don't realize uh, what goes into funding and how complicated well, it says something about, you know, our school district. One of one of the things that we fight against is, is they, they align with Tallahassee in some ways. Now they're they're pointing to them saying that this bill is bad. That's another thing. But, um, but they align with them in the sense that they don't value, at least not to the extent that the people on this call do. They don't value experience, and they bring them in low, and and then give them modest raises. And so we don't have like we're. Our, our average salary is about $2,000 under the state. I mean, there's a reason for that. And it's not because 
we negotiate terrible raises, we do a good job. But they bring them in so low that even you know good raises don't get them up to where they need to be. So no, we're we're not in the best shape. They could have this bill could have been great if they put five hundred million dollars without the categorical uh, constrictions. If they if they had just done that, just get rid of the eighty twenty ratio, none of this would be we wouldn't be on this call. So to Dave's point, until you vote them out, you're going to get more of the same. So we're just, we keep beating it back, beating it back, and making it you know not as bad as it could be. But that's a hard sell to keep to members again by design. Governor DeSantis has said he wants to keep the money for the teacher salary allocation flowing, but ultimately it is the legislature who makes the budget. And with the pandemic right now and the loss of state revenue, who knows what's going to happen next year? Yeah, but look, this is a result of the state constantly underfunding the public school budget and allowing teachers' salaries to drop so far below the national average. Also, HB 641 became law in July of 2020. That's like six months past. And you would expect teachers to return to school expecting to receive that big chunky raise. But you know, the state hasn't fully released all the funds to the school district. So many school boards have been juggling their district finances, even dipping into their reserve funds to advance the salary increase to their teachers while they have to wait for the state reimbursement to come. All right, Tina, as we move into the new year and the second semester of school, let's look ahead. Um, What's up in January? Well, you know, most of us look forward to warmer temperatures in the spring, at least I do. But it's a nervous time of year for a little more than half of our teachers here in Florida who are considered to be annual contract teachers. Spring is the season for the color pink, and Florida teachers receive pink slips. I know it doesn't make sense, but the state allows districts to release or let them go at the end of the school year. No, and that's just ridiculous. I mean, even though many of the AC teachers get their jobs back, the stress that they're under, the fear that they face knowing that they could be highly effective and still lose their job, you know that contributes to the teacher shortage. It seems like if we could end this practice, that might help to solve at least that problem. Well, I guess we'll have to find out during our next episode of Educating from the Heart. Thank you for listening, and we hope you've enjoyed this episode. And don't forget to check our show notes page and encourage your colleagues and friends to go to feaweb.org slash podcast to subscribe. We would love to hear from you. 